Hi and welcome to Text Nation TV. My name's Rusty G. And I'm Alan. And this week, uh, we've got a special guest on board. I don't know if you know who this is, but this is the queen of tech, Miss Veronica Belmont. Oh, that is welcome. nice of you to say. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, we talked to you today, and you were doing a big charity thing, which was awesome. We we raised some money for that, so we were very yes, happy you, to Yes, you do saved that. my very fragile ego, by the way. I was <laughs> terrified. I, I heard no it started one. like at one, it was $2. Like, it was like $20, and everyone's like, mm. Oh, and then and then you started bidding, started a little bidding war. I felt very very special. It was very nice. Thank you. That's awesome. Good share. You're worth er worth every penny. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> worth so, every every one of his pennies. Oh wow. <laughs> anyway, so um, like I said, you've been on the tech scene for a very long time, and I and we sat and listened to your panel just beforehand. Uh, because him and I have been doing this tech show for two years, almost. Almost two years. Yeah, and so this is kind of modeled after what you do, except for we don't do reviews and have uh, people send in questions mm -hmm. as of yet. We're doing reviews and unboxings yeah. uh, that we're building on top of. Uh, tell us some something. You know, you've been in the business for a very long time. You're obviously you feel old. Well, <laughs> I don't mean to say old. We're we're actually the same age. He's actually older. Uh, but I, I'm old timer. <laughs> but tell us, you know, for people that do what we do, mm -hmm. you know, informing the masses. What's, what's some good steps to get started and move on? Well, the biggest thing that I usually tell people is to, uh, and you probably heard me say this a couple of times today, is to already be doing it. Um, it's so easy now to, to start a show. I mean, you guys have fantastic equipment and fantastic microphones, but to start a podcast, I mean, you really don't need to be spending hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars on gear. Oh, if you saw episode one, you, yeah, you, you would well, see. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've all, we all started someplace, and I was very fortunate when I started podcasting because I was at CNET, and we we actually had an old radio studio that we were using uh, to record our stuff. So we had great microphones, great equipment and everything. But um, these days, it's so easy using a program like Audacity, which I see that you guys are using. Mm -hmm. um, microphones, you can get pretty decent microphones for under 50 bucks. Um, so it's the barrier to entry is very low. And if you already have a great stable of content that you can point people to, um, it, it takes you pretty far. Yeah, that's what we're looking to do is we, like I said, we, we tell the masses what's going on. We just talked about the iPad mini release, which yeah. we want to kind of ask you a few questions about that because we were a little off put uh -huh. by Schiller getting up there and number one, throwing people under the bus about optical drives because there are people who still use them. And you were talking earlier in your, in your panel how... Uh, people are going digital, and both of us. Use... He just antiquated us in one sentence and yeah. said, "You still use optical? Oh, you can plug <laughs> it in over there." Yeah. So it it was like, look, you know, I do use. I yeah, I have a pogo plug. I have Dropbox, uh, Sky Drive, Google Drive, this drive, that drive. Yeah, I've we all do. All. We've got yeah. every cloud. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so all the clouds. What, what do you think about him throwing us under the bus and saying, well, not us, but people in general, you know, maybe grandmas that are still burning DVDs. Well, you just said, I mean, you're on all the clouds. I mean, that is really the way all of this is going. And all of the big companies now, Apple included, are making it much easier and a much more integrated process to save and back up everything to the cloud. Um, you know, it's it's almost scary how dependent we're becoming on these services at this point. Um, I always really push the idea of redundant copies and redundant backups because even though it is becoming easier and easier, it's also a lot scarier to think about uploading all of your data to a service that is, you know, still pretty unreliable. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been outages that have really, you know, stuck a stake in the heart of a lot of major companies recently. Just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And hacking, <laughs> you know, Dropbox has been through this kind of stuff. I mean, there we're still still at a point where this is very young and uh, it takes a lot to put all of your faith and all of your data into a service that is still as of yet unproven. Right. Um, so, you know, I still think there's a place for, for, for media in terms of, you know, having a, having a backup disc, having CD copies and DVD copies, well, D really DVD copies <laughs> at this point of your, of your data is, uh, is still a definitely a viable option and it's important. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you know, It'll cost you less money to buy a used optical drive than it oh, will yeah. be to buy a laptop that has that built in at this point. Um, I've had a MacBook Air for the past year, and I absolutely adore it. And it has no optical drive, and I've mm -hmm. been okay. <laughs> I have survived without an optical drive. Um, 
you know, even on my PC, which which has, you know, two different optical drives at this point for gaming, I haven't put a disc in that. The only thing I've used it for is to download maps to my GPS unit. Yeah. And uh, frankly, I'm pretty sure those are probably online as well. I just haven't looked for them. So, you know, that's that's been my only use case for using an optical drive in the past three years, probably. Yeah. Um, it's just astonishing, you know, the, the more and more broadband reaches the rest of the, com- the country, the less and less necessary it's going to be for us to have disc media. Yeah, we were actually doing this in a previous episode. We were talking about how uh, broadband is slowly getting to the masses. We were talking about, you know, your alma mater, well, not your alma mater in Missouri, but Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah, Kansas City with the uh, Google Fiber. Fiber. Yeah. Mm, oh, it's and awesome. right That's down great. the road, two hours from us in Chattanooga, Tennessee, they've got EPB. Those are the two number one places to be right now yeah. for high-speed internet. I mean, we're talking gigabit connection both ways. It's awesome. Google doing, what, $79 a month after the $300 installation fee yeah. and all the other stuff. Um, in Chattanooga, it's like $300 a month for their high-end Ooh. stuff. Yeah, so That's a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, that. I feel like I need to live in a compound with six other people to split that bill just mm-hmm. to be able to. But, you know, maybe if I get six gamers and six movie downloaders who are <laughs> downloading movies yeah. of sorts... You know, I mean, you and I grew up in, well, we all grew up in Napster days. Yes. Yes. I mean, when it that was, was fun. My, when we were freshmen in college, that was basically like. You had that cable modem, the first time you had a cable modem. The first time modem, you had a cable modem. And you saw that song modem. go. You cannot believe how fast, can you swear on the show? Yes, How absolutely. fast shit is happening. It is unreal. It is like, this is not possible. Yeah, having that T1 line for the first yeah. time was like amazing. Yeah. And yeah, I pay good money now for business class Comcast in San Francisco. And it's pretty fast, but I mean, it's not it's not quite fiber. Yeah, yeah. they have, what, 105, I think, or is it 300? Oh, geez, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't remember what we're, I mean, I'm paying like 150 uh, oh, yeah. for, and I can't remember what our max is supposed to get to. But we're averaging around like 15, 15 down, maybe on a good day, sometimes, yeah. you know, up to 30. It, it just depends on, on what's going on. Yeah, what was, uh, after Napster, because I always have, people went different directions after Napster. Mm -hmm. What did you get after Napster? Because I I made a transition. I purchased music legally after Napster. Well, I went through, and I went to Kazaa. Kazaa was, yeah, what I was on. Went belly up, not really belly up, but it it just got really virus ridden. Yeah. Oh, it was like Napster, Kazaa, and then Rhapsody. Wasn't Rhapsody sharing rhapsody I or was, remember. was rhapsody like the first like legal yeah legit? that was legal yeah, like that was i can't even legalized. remember anymore it's like it's been so long <laughs> i actually like know the guy <laughs> rob reed has been on my show he's one of the Nap- rhapsody founders yeah. and i'm like i can't even remember if that was legal or if you made your money <laughs> off of illegal file sharing i can't remember <laughs> um but he wrote a great book called year zero that's a sci-fi story that's based on uh what happens if the if if aliens started making illegal copies of our music and owed us like trillions <laughs> upon trillions of dollars in royalties what would that look like it's a great story oh, it's it's pretty funny yeah because after after Kazaa and everything kind of cleared out and mm-hmm. you know itunes started making its thing everybody kind of went to itunes and things like that yeah i didn't buy anything on itunes until i was a junior a junior no senior until i was a senior in college right and i, I remember very specifically because that was the year i bought my uh my g4 tower right and oh. that was the first time I really had a Mac. And so I got iTunes, you know, the, the, the Mac version of iTunes. And um, I don't even know if they were offering a Windows version back when it, when it first went live. Mm, but I had a second-gen yeah. iPod. Well, the first-gen iPod was FireWire only. Yeah. And um, I, had a, I had a Rio Karma. I had, like, one of those old-school, like, like disc MP3 players wow. where you had to burn the MP3s to the disc. Um, but then I had an iPod. And the first song I remember downloading was, was uh, there's two songs. One was Matthew Sweet, um, mm-hmm. Girlfriend, I think. And then the second song, I'm dating myself, was um, Khalees, Milkshake, the Milkshake song. Nice. No, I got the Matthew Sweet single from a magazine. Oh, yeah? Back when I was in college. I'm older than both of you, so that's why I got it. I got it from, from a CD. Wow. Because I'm looking at myself and I look at you. Something is yes. beautiful <laughs> and true. That's all I remember. That's a good song. Yeah. So uh, talking about your newest shows and things like that, I, I do want to kind of promote that your newest show, Fact or Fictional. You're, yeah. You've been on... A hundred shows mm-hmm. since you got started, but Fact or Fictional is your latest. <laughs> I have one. been on a lot of. <laughs>
shows. The first, the, the first episode, I think she said, and obviously it's a set, you know, specifically. Mm-hmm. You're like, yeah, we're down in my basement right now. And, you know, whoever the gentleman was helping you out, and he's, like, just moving stuff around. You're like, yeah. hey, 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 what are you yeah. doing with that? You know? my, my husband was, like, really used the welcome to my base. Oh, oh, I didn't see you there. You're in my basement line. I was like, yeah, what? I did. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so how did that come about? Because, obviously, you're very busy with Revision 3 and, mm-hmm. obviously, the latest purchase of Discovery, you know, purchasing yes. Revision 3. So I know that's got to keep you, you know, busy. How's that and- Discovery money? <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> so I've been a, I've been a contractor for for years now. Ever since I left CNET, actually, I've been um, a contract employee. Um, so I've I've worked for Revision Three. I've worked for Twit. I've worked for um, various other like like startups and and one off kind of projects. Uh, but Revision Three has really been probably my 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 home, yeah. you know, above all else. Um, and they've been very good to me. And yeah, they were starting to do uh, new projects for their uh, their YouTube. YouTube, YouTube stuff, you right. know, these, um, I, what, what do they call it? Like the partner project kind oh, of thing. The partnership where they're getting yeah. other shows to come in that right. aren't so, produced in-house. Right. So yeah. they're not produced in at YouTube. And, and um, so Revision 3 has a new channel that's YouTube only yeah. now. So all of our other content, like Texilla, for example, is available as a podcast. It's available on various different like video on demand platforms. And uh, Factor Fictional is of uh, one of like five shows that's only available on YouTube, at least for like the first year or however yeah. long they're ex- exclusivity contract is for um which is fine because there's so many people watching stuff on youtube i'm, I'm totally okay with that um and they they do give it a little extra promotional push and it is you know it's definitely part of that youtube ecosystem now yeah. um, which is cool i've never had a show actually this is my second show now sword and laser is also part of that same kind of uh promotional project uh only on the geek and sundry channel instead right. of revision mm-hmm. three um, so yeah, they, they give us funding, they work with us and it's, it's worked out really well so far. And yeah, Factor Fictional was known as the Veronica Belmont project for like <laughs> six months and we didn't have any idea what it was going to be. Oh really? And I was, they were like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I've always loved like looking at the technology and the science in, in like, you know, TV shows and video games and being like that could never happen or I really wish that would be real. Mm-hmm. Why is that not a thing? Yeah. And so I'm like, let's do a show around that. It's it's kind of got a, a Mythbusters vibe to it a little bit, except we're not actually testing these things. We're more talking to, like, on a theoretical level. Mm-hmm. Like, like, could this be possible? Let's talk to, like, the really smart people and find out why this does or does not exist yet. Yeah, because one of the most recent episodes, she did uh, the Avengers. The Heli Carrier, yeah. I was yeah. like, <laughs> I want to watch this whole thing. I want to see if this is something. And they, they were kind of like, you know, you're in air and you're carrying airplanes. Why is it, you know? Well, and basically, so, it's like tech- technologically, it could be possible. Right. But like the repercussions of, of having a device like that <laughs> would be so disastrous on so many different levels that it would never make any sense. Awesome. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think of everything prehistory because, like I said, you've been on so many shows. Uh, you, you started out in CNET um, with Mollywood back in the day. You yeah, Molly and Tom. We did Buzz Out Loud. Buzz mm-hmm. Out Loud. Uh, Mahalo. Mahalo Daily. You've been with Twit off and on, kind of doing things like that. Yeah, my only official project with them was Game On, and mm-hmm. that lasted like 13 episodes, and then it was just, <laughs> it was too much. It was like we were so over the top in terms of production value that it yeah. was not sustainable, but it was so much fun to do. But now you're also doing, uh, you were on the uh, PlayStation Network doing your... Yes. Yeah, so. yeah, I did a show called Core with mm-hmm. PlayStation Network for four years. And that was another big part. I mean, do you see um veronica belmont in the future um you know doing your own thing separately from everybody or is revision three going to be your home for a very long time um you know i i don't know because uh doing something on my own would be it would be great too but i've i've been very fortunate to have networks and 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 companies that have been able to help support me and have been able to help like make my ideas become a reality um i'm already having so much creative input in in the shows that i do uh whether it's factor fictional or sword and laser um or even Texilla, that i don't really feel the need to do my complete own thing. Right. Um, 
you know, I, I'm not complaining. Like I, I'm making a living doing this and I'm, I'm getting to have so much control over the projects that I already have that I don't really see a need to do that right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty fortunate in that respect for sure. Yeah. The only reason why I ask is because, uh, Morgan Webb from G4 slash, you know, X play and things X-Play, like that. Yeah. She went off on a small little tangent, you know, uh, with Webb Webb. Minute, and that lasted for like six months. And so mm-hmm. that's, that's the only thing is I was wondering if, in the near future, if that was something you were looking for. But before we let you go, you know, you got short time, you got all other things to do. I just want to kind of ask, um, you just got married. I did. One of the other biggest tech nerds <laughs> in the tech industry who came from Engadget yeah. and then started Gadget or GDGT. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Ryan, correct? Yeah. Uh, you guys just got married. Uh, you guys posted photos. You know, everybody was, Tom Merritt was posting photos. Eileen. Tom was Merritt married. was my officiant. Oh, was he? Actually, Tom married us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. So that's news here. Um, <laughs> uh, have you guys, have you even had a chance to have your honeymoon yet? I mean, I know you've probably been busy, but. Well, we have not had a, a an official honeymoon yet. Um, we did take a couple of days off. We went up to, we got married in Napa Valley and then we went up to Mendocino for a few days afterwards. And actually it's kind of a funny story. I'm going to be embarrassed saying this, but we left early from our days off because we were only getting 500 megabits down and we got really bored. <laughs> You're like, I, I, I gotta have well, legs. Welcome, to, have welcome to marriage. Yeah. Well, so we've, we've been together for seven years. Um, yeah. So we, we go on a lot of trips together. So it didn't really feel that different. Mm-hmm. And we did, we did a lot of hiking and we did, took a, like a canoe ride and it was like enjoying nature and then I was actually supposed to be one of my other shows, uh, Vaginal Fantasy. It's a book club that I do with Felicia Day, Bonnie Burton, and Kyla Casby. And I was supposed to record that Tuesday, which was after the Saturday that we got married. And I was like, well, I have to do a Google Hangout. And 500 megabits down is not going to cover this. This is not going to work. And I had it all planned out to have mm-hmm. like a glass of wine and the roaring fire behind me. And it was going to be awesome. And I worked with the hotel all day trying to like work on their internet. And I was like troubleshooting their internet. And then we, I actually finally called their, their uh, service provider. And they're like, no, this is the internet they signed up for. They're supposed to get this. And I'm like, first of all, this hotel is promoting high-speed internet. And this, technically, according to F- FCC standards, does not qualify high-speed. <laughs> And I was like, so first of all, you're lying in your promotional materials. So and second of all, I'm going to have to leave early because this is not going to work for me. <laughs> so we took off. So we took home. We went home and I did the show. And then we just took a couple of days at home to relax and hang out. And uh, it was it was fun. It was great. But we are going to do a bigger trip, hopefully to Argentina um, sometime soon. Wow. Nice. Yeah, that's, say, that's the plan. What I like is that you gave everybody four barrel coffee. Yeah. How'd you know? Because uh, I have the hashtag. Never mind. <laughs> Well, I've been, I've been to San Francisco. I've got relatives that yeah. live there, so I know about it. Four so, is great. So you're not a hipster then, huh? <laughs> or, 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 oh. I'm I'm what you would call probably a a closet hipster, a grup. <laughs> I'm like a grown-up hipster. I'm like, well, I still have some of the hipster mentality, if but I'm not ever young been to or cool enough. Barrel, they have a sign that you know, no hipsters, no talking about who you screwed last night. It's just really funny, but they get to the point of just drink your coffee. Shut up. Shut up. They have amazing. It. They have amazing coffee. It's. Yeah. It's. I. I have a couple of coffee shops. I'm a big coffee nerd. Um, mm-hmm. Both Ryan, my husband, and I are. And uh, there's a, you know Ritual Roasters, Four Barrel, Sight Glass, and Blue Bottle are probably our big four. And uh, Four Barrel just happens to be my favorite hangout spot. So I, I. That's where I take all my meetings. That's where I do a lot of work in the morning. Yeah, some coffee while we're doing yeah they know me. Good. I'm actually. I also did another thing with them uh, with Quarterly and Co, which is a. It's kind of like a um, curated like gift program. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm one of their curators. So every quarter of the year, I pick like a bunch of cool stuff that I love and, and people sign up for 25 bucks and I send them a basket, like a goodie basket, basically. Nice. And so my first basket was uh, four barrel coffee. Nice. And um, what else? And uh, like meringues from a local candy shop, Miette. And people love the coffee. And I also did that for my wedding favors. And so me and Four Barrel. It is good stuff. We're, we're, good we're stuff. pretty tight. <laughs> it's, it's, they keep it's me well caffeinated. It's rare to go to San Francisco still see the same place. Yeah. Because every time I go back, the restaurant I like is now something else. We have a lot of changeover. A lot of changeover in restaurants, that's for sure. But we, we eat well. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. yeah. I love the food. Pretty there. well. As we let Miss Veronica go, we're going to let her 
pimp herself out, all the websites that you oh, are geez. on. Oh, tell, uh, tell us anything, everything. All right. Get yourself out there. Let's see. So if you want to find everything, uh, my kind of general website is uh, about.me slash Veronica. Um, the shows that I'm doing right now include Texilla on revision3.com, Sword and Laser on Geek and Sundry at youtube.com slash geek and sundry, Factor Fictional on youtube.com slash tech feed. That comes out every Tuesday. And um, what else do I do? You got your Twitter. It's uh, Twitter at Veronica. Veronica. Yeah. I think uh, I don't know about Google Plus. I, Google I, Plus. Yeah, I'm. Google Plus. Yeah, Veronica Belmont on there. And you can you just have your Google fan me. page for Facebook. Facebook.com slash Veronica slash Veronica. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think you do Pinterest. <laughs> oh, your MySpace, your Friendster. Your. <laughs> yeah, I've got Pinterest. I do a lot of fashiony stuff. I love clothes, so I, I talk about clothes a lot. Um, if MySpace you go to theladylikes.com, yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. that's my Pinterest. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can't think of anything else. I think we'll, that's good. We'll, we'll just scroll it. <laughs> yeah, we'll scroll it yeah, all up. It's like an endless. <laughs> we'll just keep going, I'm so. on a lot of websites, basically. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it comes down to. All right. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Thank you for yes. time. Thank you. And uh, again, if you want to find her online, about.me slash Veronica. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again for the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>